So thank you very much, and I'm going to try to stick to these 10 minutes. And um, in, in, th in this session, the purpose is to talk about the conse consequences of weight bias and stigma. And uh, I think Vicky and Christina did a great job talking about the consequence of stigma on the individual patient. And this presentation is going to be about the consequences of stigma on policy and how it impacts healthcare policy specifically and public health policy. So, go to the next slide. It's not going. There we go. So, the Canadian Obesity Network, for those of you who don't know it, but it's not going. is to provide evidence-based um, approaches for obesity prevention and management uh, and to support policymakers with the evidence required to, the, to, to, to implement policies. Our mission specifically is to improve the lives of Canadians living with obesity and we have three strategic goals. The first one is addressing the social stigma associated with obesity and the second one is to change the way policymakers and health professionals approach obesity and finally to improve access to evidence-based care. So this is what the network has been doing for the last 10 years. And the way that I conceptualize how weight bias and stigma has influences policies in Canada uh, is to look at this theoretical model. So stigma can operate at the individual level um, uh, in an overt and direct way when people experience shaming and blaming for their disease, like uh, Christina was talking about. But it can also uh, affect people at the indirect level. So we are socially, um, taught that obesity is self-inflicted, that obesity is not a chronic disease. And so we live in these social stereotypes about obesity that affect people indirectly. But then there are the consequences of stigma at the structural level, at the structural policy level where our own weight bias attitudes and beliefs as well as the social stereotypes about obesity actually influence what policies we have available for Canadians or for individuals living with obesity. So there's been many studies, and this is one model that shows uh, from Rebecca Poole at the Red Center that shows how weight bias and stigma can experience can, can affect individuals' health and well-being, but it can also affect policy and public health policy specifically in this model. And now we have significant amount of research that shows that experiencing weight bias at the individual level and at the policy level can increase morbidity and mortality at the population level. So what is obesity? In the Canadian Obesity Network, we conceptualize obesity as a chronic disease. It's a progressive chronic disease characterized by abnormal excessive fat accumulation that impairs health. Uh, and we, uh, we know from the evidence that it is associated with medical, medical conditions such as diabetes and other um, specific uh, conditions. But we also recognize that weight bias is an independent factor that impairs individuals living with obesity. So beyond any physical and mental or social impairment that they have because of their weight or their disease, they also experience weight bias and that also impacts their health and well-being. So we recognize that weight bias is an important issue. As we know, we've been talking about obesity as a chronic disease for decades. Uh, WHO recognized obesity as a chronic disease in 1948 when it was first established. Um, yet the narrative that Ted was talking about uh, is not of a chronic disease narrative. The narrative is this is a self-inflicted choice. And so in the Canadian OBC network, we've been trying to raise awareness and to educate and develop uh, primary care tools to influence practice and behaviors and policies to implement the conceptualization of obesity as a chronic disease as opposed to a self-inflicted choice. And so these are our five principles that we live by at the Canadian Obesity Network, that obesity is a chronic disease. Obesity management uh, is not about reducing the numbers on the scale solely, it's about improving the health and well-being of individuals. And that uh, you know, uh, weight management and obesity management is about um, helping individuals address their own individual roadblocks and that success is different from person to person. We all come in different sizes and shapes and that not everybody's uh, best ideal weight, um, it, it may be the best weight for a person. So we don't work towards the numbers on the scale necessarily. So I looked at the public health policy <coughs> narrative in Canada and when I looked at all these obesity policies in the Canadian, uh, in the Canadian system, all of these narratives ignore 
and do not talk about obesity as a chronic disease. They talk about obesity as a lifestyle risk factor, uh, a, a, a risk factor for other chronic diseases that are very serious. Um, and so every province and every territory in the country has a policy for obesity, uh, but they do not talk about obesity as a chronic disease. They talk about it as a self-inflicted risk factor that we need to prevent through healthy eating and exercise. And that is the primary narrative, which Ted talked a lot about a little bit uh, in his research. And specifically what I found that uh, these strategies are very focused on the individual. Let's tell the individual to eat healthy and to exercise more, uh, because that's going to prevent and reduce obesity. Uh, we, also show, uh, we also saw that these policies have had very modest effects in reducing obesity at the population level, and um, that there is a very heavy focus on just reducing weight, and not the overall holistic aspect of health of the individual. And of course, this excessive preoccupation with weight has led to you know, focusing on body size as opposed to health and well-being. So a lot of the uh, prevention policies we have in Canada have outcomes such as let's reduce the BMI at the population level as opposed to let's improve the health of the population. So the reactions when I talk to patients with obesity living in Canada, I ask them, what do you think about these policies? And the reaction was these messages are overly simplistic and do not represent their realities. And the public health messages tend to shame and blame individuals for their own obesity, and it tends to quantify health in terms of numbers, BMI versus weight, as opposed to health and well-being. So when I talked about, uh, to them about, okay, why do you think this is? Why do we have this narrative in Canada? Ultimately, what patients said to me was that there is a complete lack of understanding of obesity uh, in the professional community, in the policy community, and that this impacts their experiences of weight bias. This also impacts what Christina was talking about, their self-understanding and how they conceptualize themselves. So when they hear from people living uh, from the public and policymakers that this is a self-inflicted disease, they will internalize those messages and believe this is their fault. Um, that can produce an emotional response and behavioral response for patients. So many patients talked about feeling depressed and anxious, not wanting to be outside, not be, being able to socialize with other people, and also take very, uh, very harsh responses such as, you know, suicide, suicidal thoughts or even attempt, attempting suicide because they don't fit. And so uh, when I talked to the patients, we talked about, okay, how do we fix this? And a lot of them talked about the recovery process of trying to deal with the fact that this is a chronic disease, this is not a self-inflicted choice, and that, that, was, that was helpful for them to be able to, to move on. So when we did this at the Canadian Obesity Network, we said, okay, so the narrative in Canada is that obesity is a self-inflicted choice. And then we went and we did an environmental scan to see how much access is there to evidence-based treatments in Canada. And these are the treatments that are evidence-based that are listed in our clinical practice guidelines in Canada. And what we found in our report card in 2017 is that none of the governments, federal, provincial, or territory, recognize obesity as a chronic disease. Health Canada does not consider obesity a chronic disease. And Health Canada is a body that adopts and accepts and approves evidence-based treatments, and they don't recognize obesity as a disease. The Senate and the politicians don't consider obesity a chronic disease. And uh, even insurance companies and private health benefit plans do not consider obesity as a, as a disease. Mm. The impact of this is that health professionals are not being trained on obesity as a chronic disease. There are uh, now a little bit over 60 <coughs> physicians in the country who have been trained and certified as obesity certified physicians. <coughs> in a country where we have like 60,000 physicians, 60 of them have obesity training. <coughs> Um, we know that the system tends to tell people, yeah, this is about diet and exercise, so the most uh, allocated resource for obesity treatment is dietitian services. Um, there's a low access to exercise professionals, and there's definitely almost zero access to mental health support for people living with obesity, and significant gaps in access to interdisciplinary care. So we scored every province. Uh, we also uh, found out that Health Canada, who has approved two medications, now three medications are available in the market. Uh, none of these medications are covered by either provincial or federal health plans uh, or private insurance companies, very low access. So they all got an F. And uh, in the private access, you know, less than 20% of the Canadian population who has access to private benefit plans actually has coverage for these medications. So um, it's, it's basically um, inaccessible. Surgery, 
On average, one in one in 183 patients have access to bariatric surgery in Canada, and the disparities between provinces is huge. So you can be in Alberta and have, have one in 300 people having access in one year, versus in Nova Scotia, one in 1,312 patients having access to surgery. So again, the provinces, the wait times of surgery can range from six months to five years. That also got the provinces an F. And in conclusion, we, we determined that the, the lack of access to bariatric surgery and lack of access to evidence-based treatments basically means that people are dying waiting to receive treatment for obesity, right? So this is a direct consequence of the obesity narrative we have in Canada and the weight bias attitudes and beliefs that we have in Canada, in my opinion. So we have called the governments to treat obesity as a chronic disease, to reduce weight bias and stigma, uh, we've called for private and public payers to provide access to evidence-based treatments, to increase treatment for health professionals, and to build, build capacity for interdisciplinary care for obesity management in Canada, and to implement new clinical practice guidelines. So thank you very much for that.